Okay, welcome to lesson five on analyzing stats. Um, linear correlation of two variables. So this is really the one of the big things we need to know for our culminating assignment, and uh, just uh, and some of the stuff we already know, but um, but there, it's going to be some new new things that we'll talk about in this lesson. Um, and so as a warm up, we just look at this line of best fit, and so the numbers are. Well, they're not so bad to read. Um, but I just highlighted and made the, the equation here bigger. Um, so consider the line of best fit and the equation. Uh, what would the height be at five years old? And so um, you look at this, you got five years old. It's right here. You go to the line. Uh, we get a rough, rough estimate, but certainly if we plug in five, we get a better idea for the height. Um, what would the height be at 25 years old? So outside of the data, if we plug in an age of 25, you get an idea for the height. Um, what's the problem with that? Well, I don't know uh, about you, but like if you see this number here, um, you can't say you can't just keep saying like we're going to keep growing this way. Uh, this is called extrapolation versus interpolation. It's just not as accurate. We really have to be careful when we predict in the future. Uh, what does 6.61 represent? That's the slope of the line. This is in the form y equals mx plus b. So we got the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, the slope means um, for every age increase uh, by one unit, so every year they go up, uh, you get 6.61 um, centimeters higher. Uh, 60, the 62 is, is the height at birth. Uh, it's really tall. Um, it is extrapolated somewhat as well, and so uh, we've got to be careful with that number as well because um, 62 could be could be the centimeters at birth, but it, it might not be a, a very accurate measure. At what age will the girl have a height of 120? Uh, we can look and see. It's not. It's an extrapolation, uh, but it's a little bit more reliable because it's not as far outside the data. Uh, but th the question is, how would you actually solve that? It, uh, other than just continuing the line. If we plug in the 120 for height, we have a little bit of algebra to do to solve for the age. Uh, so learning targets are, um, you have to know what the line of best fit tells you about correlation. Slope, y-intercept are, are things that we've done before, but the correlation coefficient coefficient determination are new. Um, do you know the difference between interpolating and extrapolating and the limitations that arise from those predictions? Uh, the variables, independent variable is the x-axis. Um, it would also, also call it the explanatory variable. It's not really affected by the other variable. It works independently. Uh, time is usually independent. Uh, so like a year or a date could be independent. Um, I say usually because it's not always. I like to talk about why it's, it's not always. Um, that's something to think about. Uh, dependent is the response variable. It's the it's the y-axis. Uh, it depends on the independent variable. A correlation means that a change in the independent variable will will respond to a change or correspond to a change in the dependent variable. So as the independent variable changes, the dependent variable changes too. Um, this word correlation is a very big one because people often think that. The independent variable causes change in the dependent, and that's just not true. We'll talk about that more in the next lesson. The line of best fit is the closest straight line uh, to a set of data points on a scatter plot. Uh, in grade nine, we would talk about drawing that by hand, like I make sure that we've got as many points above the line as below, and as many points on the line as possible. Um, it represents a linear trend between the two variables. And it helps to make the predictions like we've seen already. Uh, it's in the form y equals mx plus b. And here's the here's really the explanation. The slope is for every one unit increase in the independent variable. So we had for one unit increase in age, the dependent variable increases or decreases by the by the slope. Uh, b is when the independent var variable is zero. So if the age is zero, we got a height of 62. Uh, the dependent variable takes on a value of b. Uh, it, this may or may not mean anything. Uh, like you can imagine if the x-axis was years, uh, the year zero would mean nothing. Um, uh, it, it, sorry, if the x-axis was like years 1990, 91, 92, 93, 
your zero would mean nothing. So we really have to be careful with the uh, the y-intercept because sometimes it just doesn't mean anything. Interpolation is using the equation to predict values within the domain. Uh, so we call that when we've got like, oh, uh, sorry, when we've got, I just wanted to go back. Um, when we're within the age, that's called interpolating. If we predict values in, on the graph, if we're going outside the graph a little bit, it's called extrapolating. Okay. Um, uh, it's using the equation to predict values outside the domain. Uh, this really has limitations depending on how far outside the domain you're predicting. Like you can maybe predict for when the girl is 12 years old, but not so much when the girl is 25 years old. Um, this is a little exercise with Fathom. If you have Fathom, it's a really good thing to go through. Uh, so we're going to actually graph the following data. So we're going to see something. Um, so we're going to follow these directions here and uh, and talk about um, and talk about what it's doing. And so I'm just going to go over to Fathom and show you uh, the graph of the data. So if we if we pull in a graph and and graph the time on the x-axis and distance on the y, um, we can actually add what we call a movable line. I just right click the white space and add a movable line. The movable line shows up. It's just a line on the data, but we can actually like start to move it so that we can get what we what we thought of in grade nine as potentially a line of best fit. Um, and so this is one thing that we can draw right on the grid, and it gives us the uh, gives us the equation of that line right away. The other thing we can do is is what we call show squares. And so what it does is it shows the square distance every point is from the line. And the point of the line of best fit is to actually get those squares as small as possible. And so we just keep like kind of playing around with that graph just so that we can get numbers that are as small as possible. We might have to rotate the line a little bit. Um, and we'll just have to like keep fiddling with the line so that it's as small as possible. And there is a scientific process for this um, to so that like the computer can actually do this. And so this is basically what it's doing is it's it's searching for as small as possible. And this number here tells us if we're very small. Um, and the actual line is when we actually add a, a least squares line. And that least squares line is 0 0.06. See how it's 0 0.068. This is the least squares line, uh, 0 0.5 time plus 1.5. This is 0 0.496 time plus 1.55. So you can see I'm a little bit off the least squares line and can test it. Um, just go back. Um, and so it's a really fun exercise, but from now on, all you when you have to do a line of best fit, all you have to do is add the least squares line. Uh, but it's fun to actually go through that once. Uh, really fun to do in class. Where we're really all trying to compete to see who's closest. Uh, the first time I did this, I actually got a lot closer than I just did. I got 0 .06024. Um, and so I, it was generally really close. I know that students in my class got a lot closer than that even. Um, so what the other thing that we haven't talked about is, so we talked about the slope and the y-intercept, but this number r squared beside it. Um, the R squared is called the coefficient of determination. That's something you're going to have to remember. It's coefficient of determination. It's what we call R squared. Uh, what it is is the percentage of variation of the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. That's how you explain what R squared is. So in this case, it was 98%. So that means 98 percentage of the variation in distance is explained by time. Is another two percent you can also think is is explained outside of time, um, but like ninety eight percent of the variation in distance is explained by time. The correlation coefficient is r. All we do is take the square root of r squared, and this gives you a a measure of how well the data fits um, or how well the model fits the data set. Uh, to further explain r, we we just think about thirds, and so. Um, the negative one it would be a negative correlation and the positive one is a positive correlation but it's just 
if you get like between 0.67 and 1, you're really strong. If you get close to 1, it's, it's pretty much perfect. Uh, 0.33 to 0.67 is moderate, and 0 to 0 0.33 is weak. Uh, when you do your survey for the culminating assignment, um, you're going to ask people how much do they agree that two variables are correlated on a scale from 0 to 10. And really, you can actually look at your average and plot it and make a hypothesis based on not whether or not they think it's it's possible that they're correlated, but how strongly they're correlated as well. You can imagine that if two things are definitely correlated, a lot of people are going to say, yeah, I totally agree, 9, 8, 10 out of 10. And that's where you're going to get a strong correlation. That's what we're... Um, but if people don't, aren't really sure, don't think it's correlated, they might be prone to answer lower on that scale. And that's where you're going to get the weak and moderate numbers. Uh, examples that we really saw in grade 9, uh, strong, moderate, and moderate, strong, uh, weak would be really scattered all over. Okay. Some conclusions uh, from what we just saw. Uh, the 0.98 is 98% of the variation in distance explained by time. The 0.99 is a strong, almost perfect positive correlation. Uh, we know it's positive because the slope is positive. Uh, slope it means that for every increase in one second, the distance increases by 0.5 meters. Uh, the 1.5 means when time is 0, 0.5, 0 seconds, the distance is 1.5, so it's really just starting distance. Um, if time is 4.5, so we could actually plug in a number and we get 3.75. It's called interpolating. It's generally really accurate. Um, it means that like the, the 4.5 was within the data. We go back and we can see the graph. 4.5 is right here. So any kind of prediction within the dr domain is, is pretty accurate. Um, and then if distance is 8, uh, this would be you'd actually have to solve the equation. We'd solve the equation and say that the time is 13. And uh, this is called extrapolating. Uh, it's not because we're solving an equation. It's because the uh, the, the answer 13 seconds is outside the domain. Um, and so like you can you can solve equation or just plug in for interpolating or extrapolating. That's not the distinction. It's just that it's outside the domain. So we're really not sure if if the distance is 8 and the time is 13. Will that actually work? Because we're not sure about the model. Because the di the time of 8 and the, or sorry, the distance of 8 and the time of 13 is way outside the data that we're, we've been given. So we're not really sure if we should rely on that. We just got to be careful. Okay. Some questions that you can kind of add to 5A is, is just really getting used to explaining all of these, these new terms.